Warning, the circuit showcased in this video uses mains voltage. Mishandling of such a high voltage can lead to fatal injuries. Replicate the circuit at your own risk. A while ago, a friend of mine gave me this LED light bulb, which emits quite an interesting to look at green light. And he asked me whether I could create a circuit to dim its brightness. And since the packaging of the LED bulb stated that it is dimmable, I said yes, that should be possible. What I didn't expect though was that dimming AC LED lights can be a very confusing and complicated topic, but let's postpone this problem for now. Instead, let's start with analyzing how a common AC dimmer works and how we can easily create our own improved version by coming up with a custom PCB design controlled by a small 80 tiny microcontroller. So that at the end of this DIY or buy episode, we can determine whether it makes sense to create a DIY AC light dimmer or whether we should stick to the commercial solution instead. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, whose new full automatic PCB batch production factory is being used since April. They produce 600,000 square meter of PCBs per month and you can get your own two layer prototype PCB for as low as $2. The AC dimmer I got online was a pretty generic one that uses Phasenanschnittsteuerung in German or Phase Angle Control in English to dim 3 to 35 watt LEDs and 7 to 110 watt halogen lamps. So I hooked it up to mains voltage and an E27 socket according to the wiring diagram of its instruction manual. As a first simple test subject, I will be using this 42 watt halogen light bulb. After securing it inside the sockets, it was a breeze to dim the brightness of it with the main potentiometer of the dimmer. But let's dig a bit deeper by removing a couple of screws and lifting up the dimmer's lid in order to have a closer look at its circuit. I have to say that the circuit is a lot simpler than what I anticipated. And the solder quality is certainly not the best. But I guess this is what you get at a price point of 24 euro. If we reduce the component count to only the mandatory ones, then the schematic for the circuit would look something like this. With a resistor, potentiometer, capacitor, diac and triac. To understand how it works, let's imagine we got our AC sine wave voltage applied. After the zero crossing point, the voltage slowly increases, which charges up the capacitor through the resistor and potentiometer. The capacitor voltage increases up to a value of for example 32 volts, which is the breakover voltage of our diac. At this voltage the diac becomes conductive and thus the capacitor discharges through it and through the gate of the triac, which turns it on and thus lets current flow through the light bulb for the remainder of this half wave. As soon as the next zero crossing point comes however, the triac turns off, since the current value fell beneath the holding current, but feel free to watch my basics video about triacs to understand their working behavior better. Anyway, for the next reverse polarity half wave, the process almost stays the same, and thus only part of the half wave gets once again applied to the light bulb. Now by increasing the resistance of the potentiometer, the charge up time of the capacitor increases and thus the ignition point of the triac gets delayed, which means less average voltage, less current and thus less brightness for the light bulb. Now of course the commercial dimmer got a couple more components to for example suppress noise and voltage spikes. But in a nutshell this is how such an analog phase angle control dimmer functions. And after hooking up the circuit to the oscilloscope, we can see that the waveform of the mains voltage applied to our light bulb pretty much looks like the theory we just talked about. Awesome! 
For such a halogen light bulb, which can be modeled as a resistor, such a dimmer circuit is definitely suitable. But for an LED light bulb, which comes with capacitors, inductors and LED drivers, such a circuit is oftentimes not suitable because the current path goes through the light bulb and thus a more complex load can lead to the malfunction of the analog dimmer. That is why for my own design I wanted to ditch this old analog light bulb series concept and instead go the digital way with this SMD ADtiny85 microcontroller. First off I needed a potentiometer to set the desired phase angle of the AC voltage. The other mandatory input for the microcontroller needs to get connected to a phototransistor optocoupler like it shown here. When the mains voltage is high enough, the LEDs inside the optocoupler get powered properly and thus connect the input of the microcontroller to ground. But as soon as the mains voltage reaches its zero crossing point, the voltage is too low to power the LEDs. The transistor turns off and thus the microcontroller input connects to 5 volts through its internal pull-up resistor. This way we have a zero crossing point indicator, from whose occurrence we can use a timer to delay the ignition of the trike according to the set potentiometer value and thus get our desired phase angle. And speaking of ignition, for that I used an output of the microcontroller hooked up to an optocoupler triac driver and finally a triac like it shown here. As soon as the ignition point is reached, the microcontroller lights up the LED for small impulse time which activates the first triac and thus also the second triac. And just like that we should be able to create a digital microcontroller dimmer. But what I forgot was how to supply 5 volt power for the circuit. Well, initially I wanted to use a capacitive dropper circuit, which I showed you how to build in a previous video. But then I realized that there is a risk of having a voltage potential of 230 volts across the potentiometer to earth and thus I decided that this was not the best idea. Instead I got myself this pretty small HI Link 5V mains power supply that can deliver more than enough current for our circuits. So what I did next was searching for suitable SMD components and then calculating the complementary passive components for them according to the datasheet specifications. This resulted in this a bit confusing to look at hand drawn schematic which through the help of EZEDA I turned into a more pleasant to look at schematic to which I also added an ISP header to later easily program the microcontroller. So next I clicked the convert to PCB button and started arranging the components in a logical order. After then connecting the components with copper traces, adding the outline of the board and creating a ground copper layer on the top and bottom side, I think the PCB did not look half bad. So I clicked the generate Gerber files button and ordered my PCB from JLC PCB for only $2 plus shipping of course. After not even a week I did not only receive my PCBs which looked even better in real life than on a computer screen but also all of the SMD components. And through the help of a lot of flux, a fine soldering tip as well as thin solder, I added all of the SMD components to the PCB in less than an hour. After then also soldering in all of the THT components, the circuit was finally complete and only came with one minor package size problem. To program the microcontroller I connected the ISP header to an Arduino Uno according to pretty much any Arduino Uno as ISP programmer tutorial ever and started writing the code for the ADtiny. Now I will not go through the code line by line and explain it since I commented the function of each line in the final code and I already told you the functional concept of my microcontroller dimmer a couple of minutes ago. But if you're still confused then make sure to watch my Arduino 101, 102, 103 and microcontroller timer videos. Nevertheless though the code is pretty simple 
and easily customizable, which is always a plus point when it comes to microcontroller designs. And after burning the bootloader to the ADtiny and uploading the codes, it was time to connect the mains voltage wires, for which I also added a fuse in series for safety reasons. And luckily after powering the circuits nothing exploded. That is why I added the E27 socket with halogen light bulb to the circuit, in a very unsafe way, and tested whether I could dim its brightness, which was certainly possible. And after connecting the voltage of the light bulb to the oscilloscope, we can see that the waveform is pretty much what we hoped for. Awesome! Even dimming the LED light bulb from my friend was partly possible with a bit of flicker. Other LED light bulbs however dim perfectly fine with my DIY dimmer, while others did not work at all. The reason for that is pretty complex, which is why I will save this topic for a future video. For now though, we can say that my DIY dimmer costs around the same as the buy version, is easily customizable and reaches a lower face angle than the buy version. However, the safety aspects of my circuits are quite honestly terrible, while the buy version obviously had to follow safety standards. So if we consider that we can get better working commercial dimmers for a slightly higher price point, which I might test in the future, I have to say that mostly due to safety reasons, the buy option is this time the winner for me. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.